Welcome to the conversation. This is a new segment that we're going to be running here at Ultra Class Kindle. We're going to be talking a lot about dogs, different conversations, different situations. We'll be answering some questions and talking about hot topics within the dog community. We're going to be dropping one of these videos at least once a week. So stay tuned and enjoy the conversation. <laughs> So thank you all for tuning in to this week on The Conversation. And as y'all can see from the thumbnail, we're talking about Rocky and why I can't keep him. And I know a lot of y'all were mad at that situation. <laughs> a lot of y'all were saying all kind of crazy stuff. Or you make it a big mistake and things of that nature. And I understand your concern and that's why I'm addressing it. Because I actually care about, to an, I care to an extent about what you guys think and how we're moving forward because without y'all we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing now so i think y'all deserve a, a logical explanation a logical a logical explanation on why we're um rehoming rocky now the backstory on rocky some of y'all have found out from the earlier video when we first uh received him rocky was from a good friend of mine and he was getting into the the dog business and then situations uh, came up to where he couldn't fully start it the way he wanted it to. That's Jade up there barking. She down here hating because she wanted to be out. But anyway, he couldn't really do it the way he wanted it to. Wanted to, so um, he asked me to help him out and take Rocky in, and that's what I did. And I never had intentions on keeping Rocky, but when I got Rocky, I saw how good he looked and his. Um, behavior he was well mannered although he still is a puppy so he still has you know puppy features he's, he jumps around uh, does all kind of crazy stuff jump busting backflips off of me running up to me jumping on my chest hitting backflips doing crazy stuff you know that's what a puppy does but ultimately he's uh well behaved so that's why i was giving a hint to y'all that i potentially may keep him but when i factored in that we have four to five litters coming in 2020, and I'm gonna to wanna to keep a puppy or two off of these litters. I know for a fact that I'm keeping a puppy off of Snow and Aftermath litter, which is almost sold out. So if y'all want a puppy from that one, y'all better go ahead and hit me up like immediately, cause we almost sold out. And then we got Queen, Diamond, and Jade. And so we got all of these litters coming up and I spent good money for the studs that we're using. So it's, it kind of defeats the purpose for me to go and do those type of things and to keep Rocky. When for one, Rocky is a standard and he's a real small standard. He's only 14 inches tall and you know, I breed XLs and the girls are standards technically, but their mom and dad are XLs. And so with that being said, they still will produce a lot of XLs depending on who I breed them to. So the puppies will still come out massively big. But with Rocky, for this particular situation, you we may have one or two versus a whole litter coming out big. So with that being said, Rocky is just too small for what we're going for. And yes, he has a beautiful color, but that's why I want to get them a real studs that I have to bring that color that we're missing and that I've been wanting. So. Um, that's one of the reasons why we're not keeping Rocky. Secondly, and one of the most important reasons is I can't give Rocky the time that he needs. Rocky is a type of dog that um, requires a lot of love and attention because he demands it. He follows me everywhere I go. He act like he's been with me for a whole lifetime. He act like I'm his dad and he's been knowing me his whole life and he only been knowing me a few days not even a, probably just about a week now and with that being said when you have dogs like that they require a lot of attention i can't give him that type of attention because i also have my own dogs that they've been knowing me every day of their life they've been seeing me every day of their life literally besides snow and so i can't give rocky time 
and give them time at the same time. Somebody's going to suffer. And then I also need time for my own self with my own family and things like that outside of the dogs. So when you factor in time, that's a big problem right there. And then the fact that Rocky isn't going to get along with the pack. It's not like I can wing him in. I can wing him in, but it's going to take a lot of time and a lot of effort to wing him in to the pack. And there's a chance that him and Ultra may never get along just because Ultra is a dominant male. And I'm not sure if Rocky is a dominant male. But if they are two dominant males, or even if Rocky isn't dominant, he may not just want to give in to Ultra's rule. And it'll be a fight 24-7. So to avoid all of that, I have to put uh, Rocky in a different home, and that's just better for him in the long run. So when you factor all of that in and you really step back and assess the situation, it's obvious that Rocky um, can't stay long term. Now, he's okay for right now. I'm taking care of him. I'm taking care of his uh, skin problems, his, uh, his uh, allergies. His uh, coat is doing really good. The hair is starting to grow back. And like I said, that was just some food allergies or something like that. So we're taking care of that. So that that's not a big concern as far as the health issue issue or anything like that. So that's really not a problem. So, um, but yeah, I won't be able to fully take care of Rocky the way he needs to be taken care of. Just because of the fact that I have a program that's been running and he just came out of nowhere, really. It was just unexpected. And I didn't want to see Rocky, you know just going to anyone because of the situation he was in. So I just gave him a good home for now. And, so, and then I'm going to make sure that he has a home, a great home at that. And he's going to come with a contract. Like one of our contracts, we're going to make sure that he goes to a good home and he's going to go at a nice price. I'm not going to sell him for like $500 to $1,000 to someone. And that's not necessarily to say that People who are only spending five hundred to a thousand dollars on dogs don't really take care of the dogs. That's not true. But when you spend a lot more money, if you spend uh, four thousand, even three thousand, even two thousand dollars, twenty five hundred on a dog, that's not just going to be something that you're just going, to, you know, leave your side, throw it away. But in this business, y'all have to understand the the market of this business. A cheap dog in this business is anywhere from five hundred to about two thousand. We got Royce for a thousand. That was a steal because they didn't know what they were doing at the time. But when I talked back to them later on, they said they would have sold him for about uh, four thousand or like three thousand or four thousand. When actually, the way he turned out, he should have been sold for my regular price, about seventy five hundred or whatever. That just because of the way he came out to look. So when you factor in the market, that's like having a, like a Mercedes and selling a Mercedes for like. A thousand dollars. You're gonna think something's wrong with that Mercedes if somebody's selling a Mercedes for a thousand dollars. Even the old ones, old Mercedes are still going for like five thousand dollars. So it's not you're not just gonna get uh, that type of car for that type of money. So uh, I, cause I know I've seen some comments talking about oh he just selling them for money. I was making money before I even had Rocky. Rocky just came out of nowhere. As y'all can see, we had this house. We've been growing with y'all support. But we've been making money before Rocky came. It's not this not a money grab or anything like that. Of course, yeah, we will make profit off of Rocky, but look at the work that I'm putting into him and making sure that he goes to right home. So basically, I'm just getting my money back plus a little bit more. So that's that's basically what it is. So when you factor in the cost and do all those things, that kind of you know explains a little bit more. So. I'm just going, taking the extra mile to make sure he goes to a great home. So, with that being said, hopefully y'all will get why I'm selling him, not just to sell him or whatever the case may be. I'm selling him for a specific reason. But I know we still got some haters out there who want to say what they want to say just to be negative because it's just negative type of people. And the only thing they got going for them is negative stuff. We love y'all too, so <laughs> if y'all are negative and y'all just want to say something crazy, go ahead and say something crazy. If it's too crazy, I'm going to delete it. But if it's crazy enough to where I can stand it, I'm going to use you uh, in my upcoming video reading hate comments. So if y'all want to be featured, if, if you're a hate out there and you want to be featured in our video, make sure you leave a hate comment and say something crazy so that we can feature our feature you in that video. But yeah, man, that's the basic rundown of why we're, keeping, why we're not keeping Rocky, why we can't keep Rocky. And I hate to give him away. I feel attached to him already and it's only been a few days, but... For Rocky's own good and for his own health and 
uh, for him to have a, a great home, I'm going to have to place him into a better home, into a home that either only has one other dog or just him by himself so he can receive all of that love and affection. So if that's you and you want to own Rocky, then hit me up at 832-952-9659. And also, don't forget about our investment opportunities. Our first investors are about to receive their profits off of uh, Queens Litter. Well, really, off of Snow's Litter because I have one investor, and that's my uh, uh, kennel partner in Louisiana. We uh, partnered up to do this, uh, this breeding with Snow and Aftermath. And so he's like the first one. And then the people like that are on Queens Litter. And so they're getting ready to receive their benefits for from investing uh, with us. So if y'all looking to invest, go ahead and hit me up at 832-952-9659. And if y'all want to know more information about the leaders that we have coming for and uh, the investment, stay tuned and watch the end of this video because it's going to give you more information about um, those leaders so, and those investment opportunities. But yeah, we can go ahead and end the conversation. This is something new. I'm going to be answering questions as far as um, breeding and how does it work and how to be a successful breeder. What does success mean in dog business and things like that. So if y'all want to know any of those things, y'all definitely leave a comment below and I'll cover some of those topics in the future videos. But yeah, we're going to try to drop at least one or two of these videos a week. And so I hope y'all enjoy these videos. Hope it's very beneficial to y'all. And I just thank y'all for y'all love and support. Remember to stay blessed. We are
What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to OG Class Kings. I have a very big announcement. I wish I could be a little bit louder, but I'm in Starbucks right now, and I just closed on a major deal that's going to be lucrative for me and lucrative for you guys. How many of you guys have ever heard of royalty investments? Royalty investments will allow you, the viewer, to invest in Ultra Class Kennels and to receive a profit off of every puppy that's sold. Now ask yourself this question. How could an extra thousand dollars affect you financially? Oh, I'm sorry, did I say thousand? I meant to say thousand. Watch this video and find out how you can invest in Ultra Class Kennels. Don't forget to comment below. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, make sure you subscribe to our channel. We are Ultra. Okay. Okay. Okay.